Getting food may seem as simple as going to a grocery store or restaurant and picking out food for tasty meals. However, getting these items involves an elaborate system that first starts with extensive research, followed by a network of people and machines alike that make the modern food industry function. This is the introduction to food science. In this video, I will be explaining the basics of food science and covering some of the many sub-branches highlighted by the USDA and hopefully introduce some passive research and development along the way. To start out, Food science is a study of the nature of food, how it changes over time, both as a natural result and because of food processing. This makes food enjoyable and safe to eat, both from the time it is harvested to the final packaged product. In accordance to the USDA, the organization continues to address the ongoing challenge of ensuring the public has access to safe and high quality food at reasonable prices. Due to the diverse nature of each production system, it creates a very challenging obstacle for engineers and scientists alike that must constantly look for improvements in the system. Take an apple for example. This is a relatively simple food item. However, this single fruit can go through an extensive system before it is used by a consumer. Let us look at the lifespan of an apple. Starting as a seed, farmers must provide soil with water and nutrients while also keeping pests and unwanted bacteria and fungus away from a growing sapling. This goes on for six or more years before the tree will finally bear its first fruit. After this, farmers will pick the apples once a year. And after being harvested, the apples are exposed with chemicals, which the USDA of course approves, but don't worry as they are safe for humans. Typically these include antioxidants to prevent degradation. They are then moved into a refrigerated storage system or a controlled atmosphere environment to keep them safe for extended periods of time. From here, the apples can be moved to a packaging facility where they will be ready to eat. As you can see, the system appears elaborate. And because the system is so large, there are many places for contamination to enter the system, such as here, 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 and here. And like any system, it has the potential for improvement. This example is still one of the simplest forms of the food production system. But as you probably know, apples can be sold off to larger markets, such as ingredients for apple juice, applesauce, or even those little apple slices in your Happy Meal. This further expands the process and allows for even more harmful exposure to contaminants. But don't worry. To counter the many issues of these food systems, the USDA set aside many important goals to help with the global food market. These are known as the Food Science Action Plan. Here, the USDA set out seven main research goals to help with food systems. This goal includes one, local and global food supply and security. Goal two, responding to climate energy needs. Goal three, sustainable use of natural resources. Goal four, nutrition and health issues. Goal five, food safety. Goal six, education and science literacy. And lastly, goal seven, rural prosperity and rural urban independence. For the nature of this video, I will be covering these four topics in particular. To start out, we will be looking at responding to climate and energy needs. Here, the focus is production systems. A production system includes food, feed, fiber, and fuels that are all climate dependent and looking if they can be made more efficient. So take the apple production system example. An apple is a very climate dependent fruit. Apple trees can only be harvested during late summer and early fall months. Farmers must be constantly aware of any changes in the weather throughout the year so that these harvesting times are consistent. Therefore, research on the change in climate and climate dependency is very crucial. This also contributes to research conducted on finding what plant species react better to changing climate and location to produce an optimal crop yield. Although the apple system cannot be easily changed, lowering the demand on climate dependency for other systems, such as large production and packaging systems, is crucial. This makes them more climate efficient and helps other systems as well. The second major goal covered is the sustainable use of natural resources essentially to use resources at a rate that can also be used to support the development of future generations. We don't want to use all of our natural resources 
as that would be detrimental to the future generation. These natural resources include water, minerals, and usable farmland. In urban areas, this especially becomes hard as population density plays a large factor in natural resource consumption. For example, urbanization has forced improvements in water con conservation research since large cities need a constant flow of fresh drinking water, filtration, desalination, and water treatment alike. The third goal looks at food safety. The real challenge here is the production, processing, and distribution systems for food in the United States. Because each food processing system is unique, it creates a vulnerable opening for contaminants. Therefore, standards and workplace safety must be evaluated yearly. Research done in this area focuses on the introduction of contaminants through natural and unnatural means. A natural process would be the outbreak of bacteria, toxins, and chemical contamination. This happens over a period of time and is due to the natural degradation of food. Examples of this include E. coli and salmonella. However, an unnatural cause might include unsanitary work conditions or physical contaminants such as plastic, glass, or metal fragments introduced into the system due to machine or operator failure. Because of this, many people get sick each year and the CDC estimates that over 128,000 individuals are hospitalized each year in the United States alone. Due to this, it causes $6 billion worth of damages. Keep in mind that food safety is not limited to the United States, and most food products are either imported or exported, so food safety is considered a global issue. The USDA has set up educational programs to assess and analyze this problem targeted on food harvesting and production practices, mostly by providing research to understand and define pathogens in food, develop technologies for the detection of food supply contaminants, and address food safety research and education and outreach. These all help develop control strategies for foodborne contaminations along production lines and provide modules and strategies to improve the cost of the systems while also making them safe. So this leads me into the last topic, which is education and science literacy. The past three goals all include education and improved literacy in individual food science topics. However, with this last goal, it includes the option to seek out groups that will improve the process of research and education. That means getting together with research teams across the world to help for a common cause. Some of these groups within the USDA include the ARS, which is Agricultural Research Service, ERS, the Economic Research Service, NASS, which is the National Agricultural Statistics Service, and NIFA, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. These groups will outreach to universities, businesses, and other youth development programs by doing this, the USDA can help strengthen the STEM programs at many colleges and universities. Here at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley in the Nanofibers Research Lab, we are conducting research on the benefits of nanofibers in food safety, food packaging, and many other aspects of food science. Hopefully through this video, you have found some research topics that can help you with food science and researching and understanding the benefits of researching food science and other topics in science education, because together we can make a change. Please like and subscribe for more topics on nanofibers, food science, and science education. Thank you.